Hello there, Misketeers. Welcome back to Missing Out Mondays, where we tell you what we're into. Start your week off right. I'm Tari J. I'm Lex Michael. And what we're going to talk about this week, we've done it again, guys. I'm I'm using my NPR voice today. I was like, wow, uh, this is super mellow. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a nice, slightly overcast day right now as we record this, and I feel like that intonation is perfect for the general mood of the day. Yeah. It's a it's a really nice mellow missing out Monday and we're going to be talking about a ruckusy movie Birds of Prey. We both saw it this weekend and we have thoughts. We're going to be very spoiler free, so we want you to go in as clean as possible. And, and, and make no mistake, we do want you to go in. Like it, it's bewildering to me that this movie isn't doing better business. So go go check it out because I think as as we both uh, agree uh, it is a very fun movie. Yes, we'd encourage you to go see this in the theater. There are a lot of great set pieces and spectacles that are really enhanced by the theater experience. The sound design is very well done. <laughs> what? <laughs> the pictures, they move. <laughs> <laughs> I'm complimenting the sound design. The sounds, I heard them. Yeah. The dialogue was audible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. You're you're like all those people who are like, but put the technical stuff in the commercials of the Oscars. You don't care about the good stuff. But what? Because <laughs> I'm like, set the the sound design is great, and you're like, they just did their jobs. No, it's important. <laughs> Um, so yes, we're going to be talking as spoiler free as possible. Um, Lex, what are your general thoughts about the movie? I had so much fun. I think yeah. there are, there, there are a lot of ways in which the bones of this thing are pretty right up the middle. You know what I mean? Like not nothing, nothing bad about it. Nothing that spellbindingly unique about the skeleton, but there's so much personality in this thing. Like I think the way Kathy Ann directs it the the way this thing was cast there is so much unique weird quirky personality i think all of these characters are so instantly likable um the action is great uh like pretty across the board great like some of the best action that has been in a, a you know quote unquote superhero movie comic book adaptation maybe since winter soldier um i had a I had a blast like everybody is clearly having a really good time like you and mcgregor is being fucking batshit wild as roman sionis and i think they're doing the best the best black mask like black mask is sort of a third tier batman villain when they do black mask well he's he's fun enough but he's basically a mobster with a weird aesthetic flourish uh this is i think my favorite black mask i've ever seen certainly and i think this is like the best Victor Zaz that I've seen like they actually found something sort of they found an interesting angle on this character because Victor Zaz was always just yeah I murder a ton of people and every time I murder somebody I I put uh like a scar on my body it's kind of like Killmonger but less sexy right and uh I feel like this they actually did they did something they gave him uh this sort of unique spin that I I feel like has been missing from this character for forever um, of course, Margot Robbie is great. Uh, everything Mary Elizabeth Winstead did as Huntress made me super happy. Uh, r- f- more Rosie Perez in yeah. everything. Um, also, this is now like this is the best Black Canary, e- like easily. That exa- <laughs> like, look, no, no disrespect to the Arrowverse, but I think it's a the Arrowverse is clutching its pearls, right? They're uh, like, the, we've had six. We've had at like least 19, 19 black, canaries. black canaries and you're trying to say that this one is better. And like, look, no disrespect to the Arrowverse, but I do think not for nothing. Like this is not an uncommon opinion. Uh, they never really nailed Black Canary. I feel like the closest they got was with the Sarah Lance character. And of course, they transitioned her out of Black Canary. And now she's to the captain on Legends of Tomorrow and stuff. Right. I feel like they never really nailed Black Canary. And I feel like Birds of Prey did it in one. Like they absolutely like seeing seeing what they what they did with that character i think it made me made me very happy but uh give me give me some of your thoughts because i have i have more but i want i want you to be able to shovel some of them at me okay um i i agree with a lot of your thoughts i i really enjoyed how fun it was like it it got me pumped in the theater just like a lot of the really and and you see some of the clips of the fights in the commercials, but they, I don't think that those do them justice, how mm-hmm. creative and fun and like 
they're all so full of personality and they all have a purpose. Like there's no fight in the whole thing or no like action sequence that doesn't have an end goal or an obstacle that is adding stakes to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a really great aspect to it. Um, And I also think that like, and I have the exact opposite opinion of all the shit trolls on the internet that like, this is a sexy fucking movie. Um, There's no like, yeah, I don't, I have I have right. feelings about those trolls too, and I think there's literally no sane world in which you could, in good faith, look at this movie and say there is nothing sexy about it. And that's that's the most I can say. I think without sounding gross in a different direction, well, but no, I think I'm, it's some bullshit. Right. I mean, I think that the issue is that these guys are like, why aren't these women objects? They have like personalities, and it's like, yeah, like that's. Here's the thing. Women, strong women with personalities and thoughts and their own like motivations and stuff is sexy as fuck. Um, And not even just the women like Ewan McGregor also sexy as fuck. He's uh, like his his tailor made suits and his gloves and the way he goes. Ew. Uh, Also sexy. Also the black mask headpiece which is that's not a spoiler it's in the trailers that he, he puts that on i got you know me and my comic accurate headwear in these fucking things and i it. was so pleased i was so very pleased yeah um but also like everyone in this movie uh is acting at the height of their abilities mm-hmm. um as you said they're all having fun um i think that there's a lot of like fun little um like Easter eggs. Um, there's a little after the credits thing, which is fun, um, which I, I think uh, is a nod to the uh, the Harley Quinn animated series that's happening on the in the on the DC Universe platform right now. Um, so I think if you've seen the first episode, which is available for free on YouTube through uh, DC Universe's um, YouTube channel, uh, so it's legit, baby. Um, then I think that you will get what it is. Um, but yeah, furthermore, uh, I think that this is this is one of my favorite like DCEU things. Oh yeah, uh, this might be this honestly might be number one for me. Like I really liked it. I was expecting to have fun, but I was not expecting to have as much fun as I did. Yeah, I think that like what puts this higher than the other ones for me is that like I, in a lot of the the dceu stuff you feel the the executive board mm-hmm. um especially when it comes to like the third act like it could be a really great movie then you get to the third act and then you feel like a a, a white man in a suit walks in and goes and this is how this should end uh, that's uh, this i mean this is what the four quadrants want this to end um, which is sort of it felt like that's problem that Wonder Woman had a little bit, which is like it's so great, and the third act still works because the first two acts are so great, right? Um, but yes, it does feel like somebody went in and said, "Well, you gotta you gotta punch a big monster guy in a weird, noisy CG garbagey environment." Yes, and that's kind of what I was I was getting at, like that and Suicide Suicide Squad itself, like that reeks of um, corporate interference. Um, and I don't feel like this has any of that. It feels like a very personal story that someone wanted to tell. And it feels like everyone who was a part of it got the vision and really was making or re- was really giving their all to execute it. Yeah. And I think that that is what makes this a standout piece in the whole universe. Well, and it seems like very much like this is what DC should have been doing basically the whole time instead of trying to be Marvel and feeling like they have to spend 250 million on every single one of these like look don't get me wrong I'm thrilled that they threw a preposterous amount of money to make the Aquaman movie they did which is big and dumb and ridiculous and so committed and I'm a I'm a fan of that but I feel like this this is what they should be doing right now is you make these movies for so much less than that you can make them so much more affordably and then you don't have to worry as much about 
you know, uh, studio mandates because the quote unquote financial risk is is less. I mean, shit, even even Joker, which is getting a lot more love and a lot more attention right now, is far more in line with what it to me makes sense for them to do. Joker cost, what, 50 million dollars and made a billion. Right. You know what I mean? So like that approach is a no brainer, though, of course, you do have to market the movie. And that's sort of where I think they they trip themselves up on Birds of Prey because to me, like, look, it's real easy for me to sit here now after opening weekend and sort of armchair, uh, you know, armchair this shit. Right. Uh, but it didn't feel to me like this movie was marketed very much. And I think this is sort of the best offering to come out of the DCEU since its inception. Um, I, to, people aren't going. You know what I mean? And like this, to me, I feel like this should have been the easiest slam dunk in the world. Like this should have been a freebie, basically. And it just feels like the movie wasn't wasn't marketed. I mean, I think that like, and I don't know what your your advertisement intake practices are. Like, I feel like I've seen it marketed for a while. Like they had the, I think the first teaser was the, um, was the It type trailer. Yes. Um, and then you started getting little sprinklings. But I feel like if you weren't specifically looking for it, yeah, it definitely doesn't feel like it was uh, plastered on every wall in the same way that other movies that are less good have been. Yeah. Um, um, and I feel like there was, what, one teaser and one trailer, and I didn't think either were particularly strong, especially now seeing how strong the movie is. I don't think any of the trailer stuff did the movie justice. And I don't feel like there was much coverage of it of it in the lead up to its release whereas like you know when an avengers movie was coming out you couldn't turn around without seeing some piece about you know the, the avengers the fucking whatever you know what i mean and like yeah. there wasn't really much of a lead up to make you feel like oh okay i have a sense of who some of these characters are and how you know like how they're going to sort of interact and like oh that's interesting and i can start to invest ahead of the movie um you, this movie wasn't really given that opportunity. Right. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the biggest issue is that a lot of the people who cover specifically nerd things and are given opportunities to write about these kind of things are, um, they're like a lot of the same neck beardy white dudes. And so like the, a lot, and a lot of those neck beardy white dudes are like, who's this movie for? And I feel like that was a lot of the coverage leading up to it being like, why birds of prey, who cares, etc. as opposed to people celebrating the, the Marvel that it was. Right. I agree. And obviously like a lot of these neck bearded guys will be like, Oh, it's, <laughs> and I love too. in their perception. It's for women, which means to them it's for no one. Right. But I will go, I will go further than saying something as reductive as it's, just for women although just you know what i mean like it's it, it's amazing that this is a movie written directed by and starring women it is clearly for women but uh, i as somebody who is not a woman but who just really likes good movies i feel like this fucking thing is very much for me oh, as yeah. well no yeah i feel like it was specifically made for me right um like it's with the way the the aesthetic how they play with the characters how how everyone interacts like i think that the the best moment in the whole movie for me personally mm -hmm. was just a it was a small character moment um I, I can't remember if it's in the trailer but it's essentially when they're talking to huntress and they're like and we got a girl with rage issues and she screams with all of her her fury i don't have rage problems <laughs> that to me is such a great way of like really ha showing how these characters bounce off of each other. Like mm -hmm. it made me want so many more of these movies Yes, of just them like dicking around together. My, my hope, but we talked about this via text last night, my hope because it's, it just opening weekend did not open strong, opened under projections. And that's a huge, huge bummer to me. My hope is that this thing has a life beyond theatrical. It's such a, it's very much a movie I mean, like, I've, what, Deadpool is probably the most obvious point of comparison as far right. as comic book properties. But it's every bit as rewatchable as Deadpool, and Deadpool very much had a life beyond its initial theatrical release. So my hope is, A, that does happen, yeah. and B, we know that, I think, next year we'll see Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn again in James Gunn's Suicide Squad. My hope is that that movie makes a 
fuck ton of money and that Margot Robbie can sort of leverage some of that to get them to do another movie like this. If not a direct Birds of Prey sequel, then something in that vein enough that we could see some of these characters return because I, I think it would be such a shame not to bring back these actresses as these characters i think like what a dang waste that would be oh yeah um so that's that's my hope because yeah unfortunately like people just aren't didn't come out over the weekend for it so i i think tara you would agree with me we encourage you very strongly to go check out birds of prey it's a huge amount of fun yeah definitely um so let us know what y'all were into uh, you can do so at Missing Outcast, M-I-S-S-I-N-G-O-U-T-C-A-S-T. Let us know what you thought about Birds of Prey if you watched it. Um, oh, I do it- also, sorry, one last one last thought that I think is is great. Like they have, so I, I would say in, a, in another movie, I would look at the pacing and the structure of this thing and say, wow, this is sort of erratic and a little bit of a mess. And in this movie, they have a complete top to bottom, 100% get out of jail free card because your POV character is Harley Quinn. Right. And so what in another movie might feel like, dang, this is just a sloppy accident actually ends up feeling very intentional to me in a way that I think like, Oh, that's really fun. Like they're not just adapting some comic book stuff. Like uh, Kathy Ann is actually playing around with structure through the prism of Harley's psychology in a way that I think is really fucking clever. Yeah, I agree. Um, So make sure to join us tomorrow. We are going to be continuing the month with no name. Yeah. Uh, And we're going to be talking about Fistful of Dollars, the 1964 adaptation big super big finger quotes it's a remake but they weren't allowed to say that for a minute because they didn't get the rights right of yojimbo uh starring clint eastwood directed by sergio leone uh so make sure to join us then uh we're going to be doing a deep dive about the the story the differences between the source material and the adaptation the performance of clint eastwood uh, we'll also be talking about spaghetti westerns in general. So I uh, look forward to a really fun conversation. Uh, and until then, you can also hit us up on our personal social media. Lex Michael, where can people find you? I am on Twitter and also Instagram at the Lex Michael. Awesome. And you can find me at Tari J. That's T A U R I J A Y. We look forward to talking to you tomorrow, and we hope you have a wonderful Monday. Also, we hope that you have a great Valentine's Day. If we don't talk to you before, then I'm making heart hands. Heart hand sunset. Um, so he's, he's doing it. It's it's quite romantic. Yes, like you should book Tari J to do your hard hand sunsets at your romantic encounter. Please do. I'll take your money and your photo. All right. Um, We'll see you later. Love you lots. Bye.